So our paper is real-time analog gauge transcription on mobile phone. Uh, my name is Ben Howells. Uh, Co-authors were James Charles and Roberto Cipolla, and we're from the Cambridge University Engineering Department. So what was the problem we're trying to solve? Well, industry is currently moving through its fourth revolution, driven by automation, big data, and artificial intelligence. And there are many industrial plants which still have a wealth of old machinery using analog instrumentation. And in order to interface this with digital monitoring solutions, plants must modernize by either replacing or retrofitting these machines. Replacing machines comes at a huge financial and environmental cost, and this is the problem we're trying to solve. So what's our solution? Well, we propose retrofitting these machines by building a sensor that can automatically transcribe an analog gauge to interface with a digital system. This should work in real time via a live camera feed and on mobile devices to demonstrate it's a lightweight solution. Why is this difficult? Well, for several reasons. Gauges have a high variability in style and appearance, meaning they have to be interpreted individually. Due to the materials they're typically made out of, which is either metal or glass, they can suffer from lots of glare, and also parallax errors can arise from viewing from a non-face on angle. So this is how we tackle the task. So we have an image here, and the first thing we want to do is detect where the gauge is using a bounding box, and we call this stage one of our system. You'll then notice in this image that the gauge is captured from a non-face on angle. So to account for perspective distortion effects and parallax error, we want to recover pose. So we imagine the gauge is on a virtual plane, as you can see here, and we detect the four corners of this plane, which bound the gauge. We then assume that these will walk to a perfect square in a face on view. And from this, we can infer a homography matrix, which can be used to produce a rectified image of the gauge. We can then uh, detect four further key points corresponding to the scale minimum, the scale maximum, the point of center and the point of tip, and use basic geometry to find the position of the point of tip, the position of the scale maximum, and use a, a linear interpolation to find the true gauge reading, provided we know the scale minimum and maximum values through OCR detection or manual entering. We use deep learning as part of this pipeline. So we began with a high res source image and we down sample this to a 1192 by 192 image pixel input. And we fed this into our first convolutional neural network. This gives us a bounding box for gauge detection. And it also gives us some perspective key points, which were used alongside our original high res source image to produce a rectified image. This uh, accounted for perspective correction. We then used this rectified image as an input to a second neural network, which then produced gauge reading key points. You'll notice here that we have two convolutional neural networks with two input, input images. And the reason we do this is to keep input image resolution low. So we have a high computation, computational efficiency for mobile, while also ensuring we have a high quality image for stage three for accurate reading. The CNNs we use were based off a single stage framework called Centinet, which detects objects as key points. And we used a mobile net V2 backbone. To train the networks, we use the synthetic image data set, which comprised of 10,000 train images and 1,000 test images. This is one of the most, one of the largest and most varied gauge data sets out there. And we built this using a custom synthesizer with 3D gauge CAD models on real image backgrounds. To evaluate our system, we used some real image data sets. So alongside a publicly available data set, which consisted of seven gauges, we also produced our own. And this could be split into three different evaluation tasks, gauge detections, which comprise of gauges on various different backgrounds, uh, pose recovery to measure read error sensitivity as a function of camera angle and gauge reading to measure read error. So we measured, measured performance of this on our data set and for gauge detection, we measured detection accuracy, which was the proportion of images we could correctly detect whether a gauge was in an image or not. And we found this close to be 100%. And we also measured how accurately we can predict the bounding box center compared to the ground truth and found this to be very small errors at only 35.4 pixels compared to the average width of a gauge in an image around 1,000. Uh, we measured sensitivity to camera angle. So the blue line in this graph measures detection accuracy, which is whether we could detect a gauge in an image. And obviously the higher the better. And the red line measures angular read error. So how accurately we could measure the angle of the pointer of the gauge. And so the lower the better. And so for zero degrees, which is a face on camera angle, we could see performance is very strong. And this allowed us to define a safe operating region for our system. Finally, we measured gauge reading. So we compared our system to a baseline method that used traditional computer vision techniques. And we found that our system generalized to unseen gauges much better and was significantly more accurate at reading any type of gauge. So we ported our system to onto iOS devices. So models were converted into Core ML and an app was developed using Xcode. Our system runs at 100 frames per second on iPad Pro and takes advantage of the neural engine. Uh, in this app, you can see that bounding boxes are visualized in red, pose recovery key points are visualized in the green box and the resulting rectified image is shown in the left of the screen. Uh, currently the user manually enters the scale min minimum and maximum values and the reading is output automatically. And this value is temporarily averaged over 30 frames. So you can see that the system's working for a variety of different unseen gauges and it's important to stress that the model is trained entirely with synthetic data. So the main adaptation is working very well. So to summarize with our con contributions, so we've built a state-of-the-art analog gauge transcription system. It's been ported onto iOS devices when we get 100 frames per second. Both the synthetic image data set and the real image data set we've produced have been publicly released and you can download them here. 
and we're also working on some future work around OCR detection and investigating different system architectures. So if you've got any questions, either ask them now or please direct them to myself or James Charles and the emails are on screen. Thank you.